let's ask us ourselves some questions. First question, what is asking for help? Second question, why is it mentioned on its own when worship is already there? Worship is, is comprehensive enough. Why do we have this asking for help? What's the benefit in singling asking for help out? Is asking for help something different from worship? And then where is the part of this sentence that is for us? If, if this is talking about you know, dedicating, you're asking for help to, to Allah alone, where is, is the, where is the part of the ayah that is for us? Because Allah tells us this ayah is split between him and us. So where's the part that's for us? So we try to answer those questions, inshallah ta'ala. So first of all, asking for help here means asking for help in something that only Allah can do. So asking for help in something which Allah has given the ability to do that to part one of his creation. Like, can you help me to uh, monitor the class today? Can you help me to lift this table? Can you help me to... Um, you know, uh, carry something. This is something which doesn't fall into isti'ana, which is mentioned here, asking for help. I hear the Arabic for it is isti, isti'ana, asking for help. So it doesn't fall into isti'ana because you're doing something which all, you're asking for something which Allah has given the ability for that person to do. As for asking for help in something that Allah has not given the ability to do, or also not just what you're asking for, but who you are asking and how you are asking. So there are three things that tie this to, to, to worship, um, particularly what you're asking for so we can talk about this here. We can talk about what you are asking for. And we can also talk about how or who you are asking. Um, so first of all, you're asking for something which Allah has given the ability for that person to do. And you're asking someone who is alive and present. So you're asking someone who is alive and present. And you're asking for something which they can do. So you're asking someone who is alive and present for something which they can do. This is not worship. This is not worship. However, if you are asking someone who is dead, or you are asking someone as though they can hear you wherever you are, and or you are asking someone for something which only Allah can do, this is what is intended within this, this concept of asking for help. So you, for example, someone could say, well, I'm only asking for money. What's wrong with asking for money? Well, if you're making dua to a dead person for money, then this is uh, falling into an act of worship here. Uh, because you're not asking them for something that they can do. And you're not asking someone who is alive and present. And so in, you're implying that that dead person is ever living or that they can hear what you say or that they can uh, provide you risk, you know, after they die, uh, that is an act of worship. Uh, so it's not just what you are asking for, although it does come back to what you're asking for, because ultimately, if you're asking somebody who's dead, you're really asking that dead person to be able to hear you wherever you are, which is, you know, still comes back to what you're asking for. But just think about it's not just what you're asking for, but how and who you are asking. So yes, it is permissible to ask someone for something which they are able to do, providing that person is alive and present. And by present, I, I mean, you know, whether you call them, whether you, you know, message them or send a letter, but you're not 
ultimately making dua to them on the other side of the world or something like that. Interesting side question on this before we continue. Is it still okay to ask people for things uh, when they can do it and they're alive and present and you ask them for those things? Is that still okay? And the answer is not always because constantly asking others other than Allah, it does decrease the voluntary aspect of your reliance upon Allah. Um, and I think that's the secret behind the statement of the Prophet sallallahu They are the people that don't seek out ruqya. It's not that asking someone for ruqya, I mean, if I come to you and say to you, can you read Quran over me? That's, uh, I can, you know, you can do that. You can read Quran over me. You're alive and present. So that's okay. But what is that? going to do to my relationship with Allah over the long term if I keep on asking others like that and I become reliant upon other people and we all know people like that who, whose habit and whose kind of uh, you know almost default response to something is to, to ask others uh, it's not haram and there are many times when you need to do it Especially sometimes it's about fulfilling a wajib. You can't fulfill your, your responsibilities to Allah without asking somebody else. But wherever possible, you really, really, wherever it is possible, you want to try to wean yourself off asking others for things, even if you're asking them in a way that is permissible. 